All right, so right now I want to talk a little bit about invariant points. These are the things like the eutectic, the eutectoid, the peritectic, etc. So right here you see a typical phase diagram. This is the one that's called an isomorphous phase diagram because there's a continuous solubility of A in B and B in A. However, if we start to look at the next complicated kind of phase diagram, a eutectic, <clears throat> now you say that alpha has a certain solubility of B in the alpha, and beta has a solubility, this is the solubility line, of A into beta. And then here you have your two phase regions of liquid plus beta and alpha plus liquid, and right here is an invariance point. It's called invariant because it's got a one phase liquid and it's in equilibrium with alpha and with beta. So at this point, we'd call this a eutectic, and it has a eutectic reaction. So the eutectic goes from liquid, coming down cooling, and then it goes into the two-phase region of alpha and beta. So that's this eutectic reaction. Liquid goes to alpha plus beta, where alpha and beta are solid. Now, if you go to something where you have a solid phase gamma. Notice we just put a two-phase region there. There's liquid above. This looks very much like a eutectic, except this isn't liquid now. This is solid. So a gamma going to alpha plus beta, that's called a eutectoid. So the only difference between a eutectic and a eutectoid is that you have a liquid phase going to a two-phase solid. And in a eutectoid, it's a solid phase going to a two-phase solid. So that's what a eutectic is in a eutectoid. If I move along, I can see another kind of phase diagram where this kind of looks like a eutectic but upside down. Here I have a two-phase region of alpha and liquid. And then this special point where I'm in equilibrium with alpha, liquid, and beta if I drop right through that point, I go from alpha plus liquid to a single solid phase beta. And that is called a peritectic. Liquid plus alpha, two phase with one of them being liquid, going to a solid phase beta. Likewise, I can find a peritectoid by making this a solid, a two phase solid, and this is how you would do that. There we go. If this is a solid phase gamma, this point is now in equilibrium of alpha, gamma, and beta. This region up here is now a two-phase solid, alpha plus gamma. So if I go from alpha plus gamma to beta, that is the peritectoid invariant point. There are some others, monotectics and monotectoids, where you go from um, a liquid to a different phase of liquid, or a gamma to gamma plus alpha. And I'll show you what these look like, but we're not going to worry about these because they're not going to show up in anything we do in this class, but you can learn more about them later. So <clears throat> here you might notice that we have a eutectic right here, but this is called a monotectic because this is liquid and this is liquid. And so when you drop through here, you go from a liquid to alpha plus liquid. So that's a monotectic. And this is a monotectoid where we have gamma. And this is the same gamma as way over here. There's some big bump up here with gamma on the top. And this is a, uh, right down here is a, um, what is this? This is going to be alpha plus gamma, two solids going to a beta. So that's a peritactic. And this is a monotectoid. But again, we don't need to worry about those. So hopefully that explains what these invariant points are, and um, there are places where you can look this up on the Gibbs phase rule, and it makes sense. They're invariant because there's only one place where this is happening. It's a single point, and at each of these points, there is a reaction, meaning upon cooling, it goes from a particular phase or two phases or liquid to something else, and that's what's meant by invariant points.